Yes, yes. Oh yeah. What's up, my Booyah crew? How are y'all doing today? I hope everyone's doing okay. I have painstakingly put many, many, many hours into this game. But not for not for no reward. I mean, it's it's been worth it. But I found all the Tommy tapes, finally. And now, once again, I'm going to shut this big hole under my mouth. Uh, blah, blah, blah. See, I can't talk to them. So I'm excited about this because I've been after these things for so long but anyway i'm gonna get my big ass head off the screen and i'm gonna shut this hole under my nose and i'm gonna shut up again so that we can listen to these tommy tapes i'll be back when they're done okay just a few questions and then we'll let you go see your sister okay tommy is trish okay the doctor said she's gonna be absolutely fine she's just resting right now and my mom where's my mom uh I excuse me, uh, who are you? Yeah, hi, Detective Webb. I'm uh, Detective Alex Rigo. This is Dr. Marino from Wessex Children's Hospital. Hello. Hi, Nicole Webb. Uh, nobody told me you were coming. Well, this incident has been elevated to a state matter, Detective Webb. I'll get you up to speed in a moment. Well, hello there. You must be Thomas. Tommy. Tommy Jarvis. Well, it's nice to meet you, Tommy. We all understand you've had an extremely difficult night. Has... Has anyone seen Gordon? Who's Gordon? My dog. He... He must be hungry. I'll make sure Gordon's fine, and then he gets his breakfast, okay? Tommy, we're all so very sorry about your mother. What do you mean? Where's my mom? He doesn't know. I was just about to tell him. Where's my mother? Tommy, I'm... Hello, Tommy. My name is Lauren Marino, and I'm a child psychologist. Do you know what that means? You work with crazy people? <laughs> well, sometimes. But that's not why I'm here today. I help kids your age after they've gone through something traumatic. You know, something really bad. I'm here to help you, Tommy. Where's my mom? Dr. M M Murray. No. Marino. But you can just call me Lauren, okay? Don't think of me as a doctor. Think of me as your new friend. I'm here to protect you. Is my mom dead? Lauren? Detectives, could I please have a moment with Tommy? Alone? Of course, doctor. My mom's dead, too. Isn't she? I'm so sorry, Tommy. But yes, she's gone. It was Jason. Jason killed all of them. Who is Jason, Tommy? Jason Voorhees. He's the man that did all of this. Your sister, Patricia, she told the police that you saved her, that you killed the man who attacked you. Jason. Do you remember killing the man, Tommy? Yes. When Detectives Rigo and Webb come back in, they're going to ask you a bunch of questions about what happened, about the man. Can you be strong and answer them for me? One moment, please. Do you think you can answer their questions for me, Tommy? I want to see Trish. And you will, in just a moment, I promise. But first, it's very important. You need to tell the detectives everything you remember, okay? Okay. I'll be right here with you, Tommy. Come in, detectives. How are we doing, Tommy? He's still in shock. I want to see Trish now. We just have a few more questions about the man who did this. Jason. His name was Jason. Do you remember ever seeing the man near your home before tonight? Did the man ever threaten you or your family? Why do you keep calling him the man? It was Jason. Jason Voorhees. Uh, Tommy, where is your father? Do you know how we can contact him? I haven't talked to my dad since my eighth birthday. He's in Mexico with, with Sally. Who's Sally? Do you have her phone number? No! Lauren, I don't want to do this right now. I want to see Trish. Trish! 
Trisha! I suggest we take a break and let Tommy see his sister for a moment. Tommy, the man who attacked you, did he say anything? Did he... Trish? Trisha! Tommy! Tommy, wait! God damn it, stop the tape. Stop the... Few more questions. We know you must be tired. I have the nurses setting up a bed for you in Trisha's room. Does that sound good, Tommy? Tommy? Uh-huh. Now, the man who attacked you. Jason. <sighs> okay, we can call him Jason for now, but we're still trying to identify who he really was. You don't believe me? Tommy, your sister told us that you shaved your head before you attacked Jason. Why? I thought that if I looked like him, that he would listen to me. That we could understand each other. When you say understand each other, you do understand that the man who did this was extremely dangerous and disturbed, right? Yeah. No one is mad at you, Tommy. We know that you killed him in self-defense. But you do understand that killing is wrong. Even though he was a bad man, do you feel sad about killing him? I'm sleepy. Tell me how you're feeling about killing the man... Jason. I don't know. Had you ever killed anything before? Uh, an animal or something? I don't think so. You don't think so? Do you think it's wrong to kill someone, Tommy? Hey, I have a visitor here who would very much like to see Tommy. Huh? Gordon! Oh, Gordon, you're okay. Thank God, Gordon, old boy. Detectives, I must insist that Tommy sleep. He's been through a lot. More than any boy his age should ever go through. We still have a lot of questions that need answering, Dr. Marino. And I will help you with that, Detective Rigo. But right now, I'm going to put Tommy and Gordon here to bed. Excuse us. Come on, Gordo. <laughs> Let's go see Trish. It gives me the creeps. Did he say anything else that could help us figure out who our John Doe is at the morgue? Eh, just more Jason Voorhees bullshit. That's why they sent me. Sir, Jason Voorhees is quite real to the good citizens of Crystal Lake community. We've been through a lot here over the last few years. Yeah, a lot of copycats. A lot of deranged psychopaths who want to see a sick ghost story come true. With all due respect, Detective Rigo, the... With all due respect, Detective Webb, Jason Voorhees drowned in that lake of yours back in 1957. It was his psychotic mother that started all this, and your good citizens who created this bogeyman bullshit. If your department can't identify whoever this deranged kid chopped up, then instruct the morgue to make up a name to give the public, and then cremate him. This Jason Voorhees shit ends now. Am I understood? But, sir, if I may just... You may not. That's all for now, detective. Yes, sir. Hi, Tommy. Hey, Lauren. Here, uh, I wanted to show you my newest mask. Oh, wow. She's beautiful. And interesting ears. Does she have a name? That's Arwen. She's the elf princess from a book I'm reading. Ah, oh, Lord of the Rings. Whoa. You know something? You're pretty rad for an older lady. I'm going to choose to take that as a compliment, young man. So, with Trish leaving for college this fall, she and I have been speaking about the next steps for your treatment. I'm sick of treatment. Aren't I done yet? Tommy, it's only been a year since everything happened. We have a long way to go. And with how things have been lately, we actually need to step your therapy up a few notches. Just because of one stupid fight? Eleven fights, Tommy. But... I have wonderful news. I've spoken to my associates at that special hospital I told you about, and they've accepted you. They have an incredible staff that's perfect for this next, more aggressive phase of your treatment. Plus, you'll get to be with other kids like you. You mean crazy? You're not crazy, Tommy. You've just been through a major trauma. But now you'll be around other kids who have had similar experiences. It's an exceptional program, the best there is in the country. Really? Really. You're going to thrive there. I know it. Trish and I are going to bring you there tomorrow. Can Gordon come with me? It's a hospital, Tommy. You know the rules about pets. Oh, man. Can I bring my masks? Absolutely. Now, start packing, mister.
patient responded positively to being institutionalized, prescribing Thorazine for the first two weeks of acclimation, just as a precaution. Dr. Neil Gordon will take over as Jarvis's primary physician once admitted at Weston Psychiatric Hospital in Springwood. Hello, Tommy. Hi, Dr. Marino. Please have a seat. Thanks. So, what happened this time? I... I don't know. You don't know. Tommy, this is the fourth program you've been kicked out of. Sorry, Dr. Marino. What's with the Dr. Marino stuff? Please. But sorry, Lauren. First, you got kicked out of Weston for fighting. I've told you. The other kids there were crazier than I am. I couldn't even sleep there. Smith's Grove, patient expelled for fighting other patients. Glen Echo, patient expelled for attacking orderlies. New Orleans Psychiatric, patient claimed to hear a man crying for his father in the nearby swamp every night and threatened suicide if not transferred. <sighs> Jesus, Tommy, how will you ever get better if you can't stay in treatment? Because I'm never going to get better. I've been institutionalized since I was fucking 12. <laughs> when does it end? When you finally let us help you, Tommy. That's when it ends. No one can help me. I still see him. Jason Voorhees. It used to just be the nightmares, but now it even happens when I'm awake. The drugs don't work, but they just keep giving me more of them. I can't live like this anymore. I can't. I've got one last idea. You're not gonna like it, but just listen to me, okay? I'm going to admit you to the Unger Institute. Unger? But I thought the whole point was to get me away from Crystal Lake. It's an extreme direction, but it's the best way to prove to yourself, once and for all, that Jason Voorhees is dead and can't hurt anyone ever again. No, I, I can't go back there. You don't have a choice anymore, Tommy. And listen to me. You can't get thrown out this time. Do you understand? This is my last option, because... No one else will take you. If you blow this, the state will take over and stick you in a padded cell for the rest of your life. I'm not going to let that happen on my watch. I know you're scared, Tommy. But this is how you're going to beat this once and for all. I'm committing you to Unger. You're going back to Crystal Lake. Okay, this is a reminder that you are being recorded, Dr. Marina. I understand. So, why did you need me to come in, Detective Webb? Yesterday morning, there was an incident at Pinehurst. Pinehurst Youth Development Center? I'm confused. Indeed. One patient murdered another with an axe in cold blood in front of several of the other patients. Jesus. Now, we're still investigating the incident, but we have the killer in custody. And we have more than enough witnesses to put the guy away for life. A real low life named Victor Faden with a history of violent crimes. What does any of this have to do with me? I don't have any patients at Pinehurst. That's the thing, Dr. Marino. Apparently, you do. Tommy Jarvis was transferred from Unger to Pinehurst just two days before the incident. Transferred? Without my knowledge? Apparently so. Now, when we ran the list of patients currently at Pinehurst and the Jarvis kid came up, well... I'm sure you remember the delightful Detective Rico from State? Yes. Let's just say that Jarvis being at Pinehurst, back near Crystal Lake, right when another violent murder happens? The coincidence has some people on edge, Lauren. Now, listen, Tommy Jarvis has had his issues, but he would never... Chop someone up? Again? Detective Webb, are you accusing my patient of something? Not at all. I'm on your side here. Alex Rigo is on his way back here, and let's just say he's never been a big fan of Jarvis or his Jason Voorhees story. So, before he starts asking questions at Pinehurst, you might want to... I'll reach out to Dr. Leonard there today and check in on how Tommy is doing. I think that would be a very good idea. We meet again, Mr. Jarvis. Detective Rigo? And you remember my associate, Detective Webb? Yeah, hello. It's unfortunate that we seem to always meet under such horrible circumstances. Why am I being questioned? Why am I being recorded? Just policy, Tommy. As we told Dr. Marino before we came to see you, you are in absolutely no trouble. How's your chest? 
I got slashed with a machete. How do you think it feels? The man who attacked you, who murdered all those people. The man who impersonated Jason Voorhees. He was a local paramedic. The boy that was murdered at Pinehurst last week, Joey? Well, turns out that was actually his son. He went nuts, dressed up like the Crystal Lake bogeyman and... Is that what this is, Detective Rigo? You're still trying to prove that the man I killed when I was a child wasn't actually Jason Voorhees? Not at all, Tommy. This is a completely separate incident. Then why are you in my hospital room? Because here we are, again, on the heels of yet another massacre where you happen to be one of the only surviving witnesses. We just need your account of what happened. You know what happened. You know who did this, and you know why. You have his body. We're done here. Tommy, please. We just need to... You need to leave. If you want to speak with me, I'll need a lawyer present. Shut it off. But, sir, we... Let's go, Webb. Now. Beginning session. Thank God you're all right, Tommy. Are you in pain? Yeah, but the meds work. I'm so sorry that you had to go through this, Tommy. I didn't even know that Unger had transferred you to Pinehurst. That's because it was my idea. I asked to be moved to Pinehurst. What? I'm tired of being in treatment. I hate living this way. I, I, I keep thinking about why you sent me to Unger to face my fear. Well, Pinehurst is even closer to Crystal Lake than Unger, so... It was my idea to be moved there. Unger should have notified me. That's on them. But... talk to me. Knowing what happened... that a crazy person put on a hockey mask and murdered people. I know what you're getting at. I mean, this is exactly what Rigo has always claimed happened the first time I faced off with Jason and killed him. That it couldn't have been the real Jason Voorhees, right? Just a random psychopath trying to act out an urban legend, right? Forget Detective Rigo. How do you feel about Jason now, Tommy? After this crazy paramedic thing, I should be feeling better about all of it, shouldn't I? So tell me, why do I feel worse? How so? I... I... I'm gonna tell you something right now that's gonna make me sound even crazier than ever. I'm listening. Dr. Marino. Lauren. What if I'm Jason Voorhees? What makes you say that, Tommy? Last night, I had a dream that I killed Pam. Pam Roberts? Dr. Leonard's assistant at Pinehurst? It was so real. I... I had his hockey mask, Jason's mask, and I stood right there where you are now, and I stabbed Pam to death. Her blood, it was all over me, all over the floor. There was so much blood. Tell me, you just survived an unbelievable trauma again. A dream like that is not unusual given all you've been through. You're not hearing me. I, I think I'm dangerous. I think I should be locked up. I, I think I'm becoming Jason. Tell me about the Unger Institute, Tommy. You've been back there almost two months now. It's the same as it ever was. Are you sharing in group session yet, or still keeping to yourself? I've made one friend, I guess. Tell me about your friend. Alan? There's not much to say. He's nice. He believes me. Believes you how? He believes me that Jason Voorhees is real. Tommy, now that you and I have had time to analyze what happened at Pinehurst, can you see any more clearly that Jason Voorhees was merely a persona that a psychotic person used to carry out their homicidal fantasies? All of these years. And you don't believe me either, Lauren. You never believed me, did you? It's not about whether or not I believe you. Whether it was a crazy person in a mask, or if the actual Jason Voorhees had really come back from the dead and attacked you when you were 12 years old. He's dead now. No one is going to hurt you or anyone else. Detective Rigo said that the body of the man who attacked me was cremated. Is that true? I honestly have no way of knowing that, Tommy. But yes, I would assume that it is true. Well... I suppose there's really only one way to know for sure, huh? And how is that? Alan says he knows where Jason is buried. Where they buried his ashes. Tell me. You're regressing. Actually, I'm not. All of
of these years suffering over this, when the answer was right in front of me. I know what I have to do now. We're rolling, Detective Rigo. So, here we are again, Dr. Marino. Only this time, it only took a matter of weeks before there was another massacre. Once again, your patient, Tommy Jarvis, is in the middle of it. I haven't spoken with Tommy yet, detectives. I have no details for you until I can speak to my patient alone. Do you know what I think? What I've always thought since the day I got sent to this godforsaken Camp Crystal Lake place to clean up the first Jarvis mess? I really don't care, Detective Rigo, but I bet my pension that you're going to tell me anyway. I think that Jason Voorhees is nothing but an urban legend. And for some reason, it's compelling enough to attract sick and damaged people like the patient you work with to come here and carry out their homicidal fantasies as Jason. Uh, what do you want me to say, Detective Rigo? That I agree with you that Jason is an urban legend? Oh, I know you and I agree on that front. I just wish my associate, Ms. Webb, here could say the same. Sir, I've lived here my entire life. They can change the name of the place to Forest Green or Green Fucking Acres. It will always be Crystal Lake. And people will never forget what happened here. Or how many times it's happened. I understand that, but it wasn't fucking Jason Voorhees. Jesus Christ, do you even realize that the legend doesn't even make a lick of sense? Jason drowned as a little boy and died, right? But then you locals think he came back from the dead to avenge his mother and was somehow now a grown man? And now he just keeps coming back? Look, I've never once let superstition affect my work. All I'm saying is that at a certain point, you've got to look at the facts and... And the fact remains that no one on God's green earth has done more to perpetuate this bullshit story and keep inviting this horrible shit to Crystal Lake's front door than that Jarvis freak. And Dr. Marino here insists on humoring Tommy Jarvis instead of locking him away where no one can hear from him again. I've had enough of this. Unless you're accusing my patient of an actual crime, then I'm done here. Oh, you're done here, all right. The way I see it, you have two options. You can either continue to defend your precious basket case Jarvis while bodies pile up, or you can help us shut his fucking mouth once and for all and stop getting people killed. I'm glad this is being recorded because I believe you just threatened my patient. No, doctor, I'm threatening you. You've had years to shut down this raving lunatic, but instead, he's only gotten worse. And now I got yet another pile of innocent corpses, dead sheriffs, and an entire campground full of terrified, scarred-for-life children because of what Tommy Jarvis brought to this godforsaken place. So do your fucking job. Either cure this asshole's insanity or lock him away where he won't be heard from again. Oh, God is my witness. I'll make sure that you never practice psychiatry again. Where are you going? Hey, hey, you can't just... God damn! Shit, holy... Jesus, jumping Christmas shit! Shut it off, Webb! Thank you for meeting with me, Tommy. I put Jason back at the bottom of Crystal Lake, where he belongs. They've had divers out there all morning. Tommy, they haven't found anyone yet. That's impossible! Who's saying that? Rigo? That lying bastard! Maybe you put someone in that lake. Someone who was killing innocent people. But it was not Jason Voorhees. Do you understand me? They've gotten to you, too. Oh, God, they've gotten to you, too. Nobody has gotten to anybody. But, Tommy, the police are convinced that psychos keep coming here to masquerade as Jason because you keep perpetuating the story. Alan knew where Jason was buried. He brought me there. I dug him up, and his body was right there in the grave. He was never cremated, Lauren. But... But he came back to life. He killed Alan. And all of those people. And it's all my fault. Yes, Tommy. It is your fault that you attract these... these maniacs. All this town wants is to bury the Voorhees story, but you... everywhere you go, you keep it alive, and that's why this happens. There are witnesses. An entire camp full of witnesses saw... Saw someone dressed in a hockey mask. Once again. Don't you see the pattern here, Tommy? I watched Jason crawl out of his grave! No, you didn't, because that's not possible! Tommy, I'm sorry. I can't help you anymore. My God. They're gonna kill me, aren't they? What? Who's they? Who's going to kill you, Tommy? You. You sold me out to them, didn't you? 
You told me you were my friend. The night I met you, you, you said you, you'd protect me. Now they're gonna kill me because I know the truth. Tommy, stop. Put down that lamp. How could you do this to me? I'm the one who finally killed Jason, me! But they're all so desperate to cover it up that now you've signed my death warrant! You're out of control, Tommy. Put down that lamp and... <laughs> I'm sorry, Lauren. I, I, I didn't want to hurt you, but... They're coming to get me. If you're hearing this, then you found my website, and they haven't taken it down yet. <clears throat> my name is Tommy Jarvis, and I know the truth about Jason Voorhees, the truth that they don't want you to know. Thirty years ago, I survived an encounter with Jason when he attacked my family and a group of teenagers renting the house next to ours at Crystal Lake. Jason killed them all, including my mother. Only my sister and I survived, because I took him out. But what did they do? They institutionalized me for over a decade. They told me I was crazy, that Jason wasn't real. Even my own sister eventually even gave up on me and stopped calling. Trish, if you're out there somewhere, and if you hear this, I forgive you. I know that they must have gotten to you. I love you, and I don't blame you. Just, I just hope you're safe. Several years ago, I dug up Jason's grave to see once and for all if his ashes were really in it like the authorities claimed they were. They lied. They lied to me, to all of us. They never cremated him. And Jason came back again, killing over a dozen people. It wasn't someone impersonating Jason like they want you to believe it was him. This time, there were witnesses. Megan Garris, the sheriff's daughter, Deputy Rick Cologne, and a whole camp full of kids. They survived that night. They know the truth, but but they, they've all been brainwashed or, or, or threatened into believing what they want them to believe. Yes, they want everyone to believe that what they saw was merely another psychopathic imposter pretending to be Jason Voorhees. But I knew the truth. So then, then they came after me because I wouldn't repeat and sell their lies. I, I had to knock out my psychiatrist to escape. Dr. Lauren Marino, I'm sorry that I hurt you, and I hope that you're all right. I only did what I had to do after they had gotten to you. I think I've tracked down one of the other survivors, someone else who knows the truth. I'm... I should keep moving. I'll post again soon. Tommy Jarvis here. Sorry, it's been a while since I last posted, but I'm now at a different, more secure location. I think I'm safe for now. I know that I must sound crazy on these recordings, but I swear to God that I'm not. I was able to track down one of the other survivors from the night I dug up Jason, and he came back. Deputy Rick Cologne. I locked Rick in a jail cell that night so that I could try and stop Jason. But Rick knew what really happened. When you know it, though, Rick just so happened to move away and never be heard from again. The bastards got to him, too. It took me a few years, but eventually I tracked Rick Cologne down in Maryville, Ohio. He was still a police officer, but apparently he had been going under the last name Pastori his wife's maiden name. I found him too late, though. I found out that Rick had supposedly been murdered by some maniac in Maryville named Pinker. 
kind of ironic. You flee one place because you know the truth, that there's an unstoppable killer on the loose, only to be murdered by another. If that's really what happened, I'll never know for sure. Personally, I think Rick knew too much and was starting to talk. I think they took him out. And that's why I run. That's why I hide. I can't trust anyone anymore. But... But now with these recordings, I can get the truth out there. Over the years, Jason Voorhees has come back and done it again. Crystal Lake, a cruise ship. I've seen the news and I've put it all together each time. No matter how they try and cover it up, they can't fool me. I don't know how Jason got loose and from where I put him in the lake, but God damn it. He's still out there, I know it. <laughs> they think that if people will just forget about him and not speak of him, well, that no one else will be killed by him. They actually think that every time these massacres happen, it's just some crazy person pretending to be Jason. But the truth to anyone hearing this is that you can never kill Jason. You can't kill death. Oh, you better believe Jason lives, my friends. I'm not crazy. It's everyone else who's fucking crazy. Don't buy their conspiracy that it's all just a legend. Jason is real. But I know how to trap him. I know how to make it stop again. All I need is to get back to Crystal Lake. And then... We I'll... need to take the microphone away now, Tommy. It's time for your medication. No. No, no more medication. Listen to me, goddammit. Stay away from Crystal Lake until I can put Jason back in hell where he belongs. Stay away. And what? What are you doing? No, 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 no. Don't make me go to sleep. Please. No sleep. No sleep. Thank you, gentlemen. You can put Mr. Jarvis in the quiet room for tonight. Patient continues to describe various conspiracy theories whenever asked to record his thoughts. He seems convinced that he is on the run out somewhere in society and appears either unaware or in extreme denial of his actual location. Jarvis once again exhibits intense fear of nightmares and needs to be highly medicated in order to sleep. I am still trying to figure out how he's been lacerating himself while sleeping, but tonight I will personally be monitoring his behavior throughout the night. Dr. Lauren Marino, Weston Psychiatric, Springwood. Wow. That Tommy Jarvis turned into a nutcase over Jason Voorhees. I mean, he legit went cuckoo. But it, in a way, he was right in... I, I don't know, man. That was just... Wow. That's a nice little added touch to the, to the game, putting those tapes in there like that. And it's... It really, really makes you think. Jason Voorhees is the cerebral assassin. I mean, he went after that. He couldn't get his body. He went after that man's mind. You know, I'd say he succeeded. That dude had nothing left upstairs. Whew. All right. Well, that's going to be the end of this episode. I know it's a little bit longer than the Pamela tapes. But, you know, yeah, I, just, I had to do this one because it's wow. That's all I can really say to it is, damn. But that's going to be all for this video. If you're new to my channel and you like what you see, go ahead and elbow drop that subscribe button for me. And the, you can click the like button too while you're at it. I don't care. It wouldn't, it, you know, would, would actually kind of make me feel good. You know, so y'all go ahead and do that. And something that I want y'all to do for you and your enjoyment is I want you to kick me in the ding -a -ling. That's what I want y'all to do. And that way, y'all get all my notifications when I put content to the channel. Now, I want y'all to follow my two Booyah Man Life rules. And I want y'all to be good to each other. And I want you to be kind. Because you never know what your kind actions today could have a positive impact on somebody tomorrow. And we all need that today. So, y'all go ahead and do that. And whatever you're going to do, make sure you rock that shit. I'm the Booyah Man for the Billy Booyah Show playing the Tommy Tapes. From Friday the 13th, the video game. And I'll catch y'all in the next episode.